Welcome to the Metal Voice once again. Richie Faulkner, guitarist, elegant weapons, and of course, Judas Priest. How are you doing, my friend? Brother, we meet again, which is an exciting thing because we're always talking about cool stuff. So I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Great, exciting news. Invincible Shield is the upcoming 19th studio album by Judas Priest that will be released on March 8 via Epic Records. It was produced by the band's touring guitarist, Andy Sneap, who also produced 2018's Firepower. Also, an upcoming U.S. tour starting April 18th as well. All right, describe to me in one sentence... This is for the headline here, the new album. Just describe to me in one one solid headline for this new album. I can't do that. <laughs> sure, you, you could do it. You could do That's it. That's insane. It's <laughs> Judas Priest in 2024 is what it is. All right. All right. How about this? Comment on my review right here, and I'll let you go with this, okay? This album will stand on its own over time, the same way British Steel did, the same way Screaming for Vengeance did, Defender uh, and the same way defenders of the faith have. What we are getting here is a continuation of the fire power sound with more musical interludes, more memorable songs, more memorable solos, more memorable melodies, and more intricate songwriting in a metal smack in the face. I would say that's pretty accurate. I think um, it's its own animal, as all the albums are, as you as you said before. It's the character of the band that's been there for over half a century now. There's Halford, Glenn Tipton, Ian Hill, Scott Travis. Scott's been there for 30 years, you know. So there's that beautiful legacy of that they laid down, along with K.K. Downing and Les Binks and Dave Holland and all those guys in the past. Um, and we're moving, we always try to do something a little bit different. And, in, in, you know, whether it's musical or lyrical content or we always try to make it better, quote unquote, you know, better songs, as you said, better production, better solos, better melodies. We always try and strive to do something that's better than the last one. And, and it has its own unique quality. So I think that's pretty, that's pretty accurate what you said there. I am totally blown away, by the way, by this album. I, I, you know, I, I just, I, I just, I can't believe it. It's like unbelievable. It, it's just, I, 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 and when people hear this, they'll understand what we're saying. It's just, or I'm saying, right? That's one of the the most um, interesting things and exciting things about a record release. Now, this is my third one with Priest, as you know. Yeah. So we have a record that we know, and now you've heard as well, and no one else has heard it. No one else has heard songs like As God Is My Witness or Serpent and the King or Invincible Shield. Or, you know, no one's heard them yet. So it's an incredibly exciting time. And as you know, man, as soon as that thing comes out, everyone's going to be giving their opinions and saying what their favorite track is and how it relates to other albums. And that's the beauty of Priest, man. That's the beauty of Priest and our Priest family that uh, that we love so much. So we can't wait to release it. What was your guitar plan going into this album versus the last album like what was your mindset well there's two sides to this uh, i always kind of do it the same way i sit down with the guitar uh whenever you know like today i might sit down with the guitar and a riff will come out or a section will come out i'll come up with something that sounds strong and build on that and i kind of let the guitar dictate what i'm coming up with um and we take those ideas and then get them in a writing session together with the three of us. Um, and we put those ideas out there and see if anything sticks. Um, well, I've always done that with the three albums with the band, but what I did differently this time, we had a bit more time um, to develop riffs and solos and musical parts because of the lockdowns of the pandemic, you know? So there were a few solos in this, on this record, which I actually worked out. I don't usually do that. I usually, uh, play some off the cuff solos in the studio and then a little bit stick here and there yeah. and you build it around them. But uh, a few of them on this record, I actually worked out. I'm always trying to find my own voice. I'm always trying to my, find my own thing to say, you know, coming in after KK Downing, who had such a unique voice and Glenn as well. What am I going to say? That's always been my journey. So I, I mapped out some of the guitar solos on this record, which I don't usually do. I'll, I'll name you some of the songs that people haven't heard. I'll just throw in my little tidbit, and then you tell me what you think, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. The Serpent and the King 
This to me is like free will burning's cousin. That's interesting, man. That's great. Yeah, obviously it's it's a really it's a fast screeching priest track, you know, with Rob's banshee vocal style. Um that one had been around for a while with no vocals, but we knew there was something in the song. We knew there was an energy uh, and a and a fire. Uh, and when Rob put the vocals on, I think it was one of the last ones that he came up with. It just sent it over the top, man. That, that you know that Halford high register banshee wail is something that really, in the dynamic flow of the record, that's something that really uh, makes the record and that song jump out. Well, I really love that song. It'll be fantastic to play live. You know what I love about this album versus the last? I did. I I do love the last album, but this one's better because there's more little musical interludes. Like you're going off with the guitar on different tangents. I don't know. Do you agree with that? I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I've used the word progressive before, and, and the internet tore me apart. Everyone's got a different <laughs> definition. And I think it was your fault. I think you put that out there. So that's okay. I, I stand by that. It's uh, it's progressive in the sense that it it kind of, as you said, it doesn't stick to verse bridge chorus uh if there's a musical part that wants to go somewhere else we'll go there and then go somewhere else and then go somewhere else and then come back with twists and turns along the way um if anything i think it's a less commercial record than firepower because it kind of it strays away from that three minute single as much as it could you know uh, i wasn't really interested in, in that dynamic so i was just putting in more musical bits panic attack actually had another musical part in it which was a slower solo part we actually took that out because we actually thought it was too many too many parts in there so that was the kind of attitude that i was going into it with and that's what the the album kind of took on as a character so we went with it i love it invincible shield this was my comment jawbreaker free will burning vibe anthemic yeah it, it's it, see this is the thing when, when when you release a new priest record you attach it to something. You have to. You have to, right? There's no you other way to. to describe something. <laughs> like for someone who's never heard it, you need to have some sort of context, right? No, you're absolutely right. Um, it's one of those songs I've just mentioned, which has riff after riff after riff after part. The solo goes off in a different direction. The solo is almost a, a, like a musical piece in itself. It changes almost like Randy Rhodes. I was going for that. That was one of the solos that I mentioned. Um, and I wanted like a Randy Rhodes type feel um and uh yeah it's 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 a challenging song to play right until the very end there's stuff going on so it's a great fun fast anthemic track and it sums up the title of the album really it's yes. uh that's what it's all about it's the metal that we all know and love and it's our music and our community and when i mean defenders i don't mean as of the whole album because defenders is a very different album i'm talking about the more ferocious fast tracks of defender that's what i'm getting those that vibe no, for Gates sure. Of, I know exactly what yeah, you mean. Gates of Hell, Defenders vibe again, with lots of 80s flash guitar, which would be allude to Eddie Van Halen or Randy Rhodes-ish. I think that's a fair statement as well. I mean, do you, I think because of the, the vast tapestry that Priest have laid down in the past, the diversity, you know, you have stuff like another thing coming next to Screaming for Vengeance, next to uh, Beyond the Realms of Death. There's such a diverse... The groundwork that's been laid um if there's something that we're working on and it has that a flair from that point in time if it's a strong idea we'll go with it man and it just allows you to do more stuff creatively i think i think yeah it's got uh, a tip of the hat to the 80s maybe uh but a good strong track i think yep god as my witness this is bark at the moon on steroids <laughs> yeah man I, I, you know you're saying these things i never thought of things like that but when you say it you you're, you're not wrong uh that's another fast one uh this comes in after crown of horns which is a mid-paced anthem and when this one there's a fade out on crowd of crown of horns and then when this one hits you sometimes it makes me jump still if i've got the speakers cranked and there's a fade out on crown of horns and then this one jumps in uh this is relentless this one that's a great track Escape from reality. I'm getting a doom Sabbath feel here. Yeah, that was one of Glenn's songs that he brought in uh, to the sessions, and we needed a midsection. So um, we came up with something that was leaning. You know, as I said before, if you put some riffs down and they start to take on their own character, and it was mm -hmm. a very kind of Sabbathy midsection, and Rob went with that dynamic as well. 
but that was one of Glenn's ideas and we thought was strong and has a different texture on the album, uh, both in sonics and in sentiment of the vocals. So uh, we thought that was a good dynamic to have in there. And, and you know, I, I just want to talk about Glenn for a moment. Glenn, you know, it's so sad about his illness. How's he doing? Well, he has good days and bad days, as you know. Um, but, uh, you know, again, what he could do on this album, if we, we went in with the pretense of if you can play it, he would. And if he couldn't play it, mm -hmm. then I would take over and share the responsibility. So uh, it was important for us to have Glenn in there. And I think it might have been important for him as well to be included yes, uh, yes, as much as yes. he could be. Like an elder, right? He's like an elder sort of looking over everything and just... Ah, yeah. Dude, he, he's ex exactly like Escape of Reality. Something like that Glenn comes up with that's a little bit off the cuff and it has its own character. Glenn does. Glenn's vital to the pre-sound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how we approached it. Sons of Thunder. This is what I'm hearing. Sunset Strip, a distant relative of Hellbent for Leather. Bang on. I think that's bang on. I think de definitely it reminds me of Hellbent for Leather in 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 heart. Um, that's another one of Glenn's. Glenn came to the session and he had this song, Sons of Thunder. We added a couple of bits and solo sections and, and stuff like that. And uh, again, that's, that's Tipton. Hellbent for Leather was Tipton too. So that's a, a testament to how he writes songs. Short, sharp, and to the point. Giants in the Sky, a tribute to the metal gods that have passed. Is that is that a fair like it's hard for me to hear the lyrics right so I'm just trying to figure He's, this out. You're absolutely right, but Rob has that kind of way of having something meaningful, but yeah, ambiguous as well. You know, it's slightly you're not sure what it could refer to, but yeah, you're right. It's the metal gods that have passed that music their music will live on forever. The last words on Rob's final scream is "You will never die," and that kind of I take as a reference to the music. And these metal gods that we all hold in such high esteem, it will live on forever. And then you have like the bonus tracks with our three. And I thought, wow, man, these guys, I don't even know why they're bonus tracks. But then you have The Lodger, and I think this is from the movie of Jack the Ripper, correct? It could have that kind of thing. It tells a story. It's uh, Bob Halligan Jr. that wrote that song, who's got a history with Priest. You know, take heads are going to roll. Heads are going to roll. Exactly. Yeah. So Bob, uh, he, he produced that song for us. Uh, and gave it to us and it kept coming back it, you know we'd do work on other songs and then that one kept coming back and it's got a really unique uh it's almost like a broadway type yes, sentiment yes, as you said yes. with the jack the ripper type stuff so we we wanted those three tracks we thought they're strong tracks but for, for one reason or another didn't make the actual record but we wanted them to be out there so, so you know what it's like man you listen to some bonus tracks of some bands and you like those better than the ones on the record so we yeah. just wanted to put everything out there. So Vicious Circle, Lodger, and um, Fight of Your Life. Fight of Your Life is one of my favorite songs on there. I, I love it. great swagger. Yes. Uh, so we wanted to put them all out, but have that kind of album dynamic as it was, and then put those out separately. Just to clarify, Bob Halligan Jr., is this a, a cover, or is this a song he wrote for you guys, or what? what is that all about? He he wrote it and thought it would be appropriate for Priest to do, you know, with the history. And he, he I think he could hear... Priest doing it and Rob singing it and stuff like that. So he presented it to us. Um, and as I said, it just kept coming back into the sphere of of consciousness. And we thought, let, let, let's have a go at it. And we did. And it, it came out really unique, I think. In the last few minutes that we have, tell me about Rob's vocals on this album versus the last album. Like to me, Rob is just firing off on all cylinders. Dude. You could you couldn't ask for a better vocals. Oh, not only not only <laughs> vocally, but he, the way he puts the songs across really connects the listener with them. You know, the sentiment of the song comes across. And Rob's got such a diverse range, as we all know. He'll do the high stuff, he'll do the low stuff and the stuff in the middle, which really, he's so dynamic. Um, he's not just like a one-trick pony. He doesn't just do one thing. Rob does so many things, which makes him the metal god, the undisputed metal god. And uh, it's fantastic to work with him. You know, and, and comment on this, like I'm listening to Priest, I listen to Sax, and I listen to all the legacy bands. Mm -hmm. They seem to be the trailblazers of the, today. Like, where in the past, it was the younger bands who were the trailblazers, you know, the 18, 19-year-old, 20-year-olds. Why are legacy bands pumping out such quality music? That's a good question. I think they've always, you always set out to create the best you can, I think, and they've always done that. Uh, but you're right, there definitely seems to be a resurgence in, you know, quote-unquote legacy acts. Um, we're going out with Saxon, Uriah Heap, 
in a in a couple of months. Um, I don't know, man. I think things come full circle sometimes, and tastes change and develop. And I don't know, man. It's just like a, as you said, it's a an upsurge in that type of classic metal. And I'm there for it, man. I love it. All right. Last thing. Rethink your opening statement. How do you describe the album in one sentence? Dude, I still can't do that, man. It's such a... I can't do that. I can't. It's so, like, quantifying and describing your own music is yeah. so difficult to do without sounding, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, it's up to the listener. It's something that the listener is going to decide. Um, I've got my opinion of it, which is... Um, you know, it's who we are as priests in 2024. That's what we're coming up with, that we're forging forward on the legacy that they've laid and moving somewhere else, hopefully. And uh, I hope fans dig it. On that note, Invincible Shield, March 8th on Via Via Epic Records. The tour starts on April 18th in U.S. Hopefully you'll have some more dates coming to Canada. Thank you so much, Richie. All the best. And Thank I'll you, say it again. This is an outstanding album. Congratulations. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you again soon. Talk soon, my friend. Bye. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.